Bob Love, Southern University. Bob Love finished his career as Southern's all-time leading scorer and rebounder with 2,458 points and 1,166 rebounds. That's a career average of 23.1 points per game and 14.9 rebounds per game. As a sophomore, he averaged 22.6 points and 12.3 rebounds. As a junior, he averaged 26 points and 18 rebounds per game. And as a senior, Bob put up an astounding 30.6 points and 18.2 rebounds per game. Love was a two-time All-American and three-time All-Southwestern Conference selection and was selected by the Cincinnati Royals in the 1965 draft. He has been inducted into the NAIA, Basketball Coaches, Illinois, Louisiana, and Helms Halls of Fame. Bob Love, Southern University, and inductee into the 2017 class of the Small College Basketball Hall of Fame. Please welcome to the stage 2017 Hall of Fame inductee from Southern University, Bob Love! Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd just like to say it's a great pleasure to be here, and I would like to, like to say thank, thank you to the uh, selection committee. committee. I'm so happy, I'm so happy about this. Boy, this is probably one of the greatest um, moments, moments of my life. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like, to, I'd like to also begin by thanking my high school coach, uh, Mr. Payne Montgomery. Uh, and I would like to thank my college coach, Dick Motter. Dick Motter. And I would like to thank my mother and my grandmother, my grandfather, for bringing me, for bringing me through in, in the hot, sweltering, sweltering heat of Louisiana. In the cotton fields, boy, you talk about tough, man. It's really, really tough. Uh, I, used to, I used to pick cotton. For uh, for two dollars a hundred, and I used to go in the cotton cotton field there, and I would chop the cotton for two dollars fifty cents a day. Boy, it taught me it taught me a great lesson that that I carried all through all through college and all through through, through my pro career. Would like to I would like to also thank would also thank um, Mr. Jerry Ranzoff, the uh, the owner own, owner of the Chicago Bulls. Uh, after I finished, uh, uh, after I finished pro, after I finished playing pro ball, uh, I ran into, I, I ran into, I ran into some hard times. I was, I was a guy who, all his life, uh, all his life, I couldn't say one single word of it without stuttering. Uh, I had all of my money taken from me, everything taken, taken from me, and and I had to, I had to stay on, I had to stay on a cane. Five years after I got through playing, because I had to have a back operation in my last year, and and I couldn't walk. Um, <clears throat> five years after I, after I got through playing, because I stuttered really bad, uh, I went around the company to company, and no one would hire me. Then I finally went to a company called Nordstrom. There they hired me as a bus boy and a dishwasher, ladies and gentlemen, for five dollars and fifty cents an hour. Unbelievable. Uh, one day, one day, one day, they were having an All-Star game up in Seattle, and uh, 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 the Seattle paper had a big article in the paper, and it had my picture up there. Bob Love, former NBA basketball star, All-American in college, busting tables and washing dishes. Uh, uh, you talk about embarrassing. It was the most embarrassing moment of my life. Uh, but it turned out to be something good. Uh, uh, the next day after that article came out, got a call, I got a call from Mr. Jerry Ranzoff of the Chicago Bulls. He said, Bob, we read this article, said, you deserve better, son. And, and uh, we, want you, we want you to come back to Chicago and, and, and uh, work, as, work as Director of Community Affairs. Um, <clears throat> uh, I didn't say yes and I didn't say no because I still could not, I still couldn't speak straight. Well, uh, the owner of Nordstrom came to me and, and, and said, Bob, you showed, you, showed, you showed that you would bust tables and you would wash dishes, and, and you never complained. You did it like a man. You took it. You took it. Well, 
one year later, one, one year later, they uh, they hired a um, speech therapy for me, and I improved, and I, and I started going around the country, and and I now, ladies and gentlemen, I speak over, speak to over 20, 25,000 young people each and every year. I'm in every college almost in the country. <laughs> and, And it's the greatest feeling in the world. And I'd like to tell you young men over there, in your lifetime, <clears throat> two things are gonna happen to you. Once, one thing is, is good. Uh, uh, the next thing that's gonna happen to you is bad things, something bad. And, and, a, and, a, and a young man, you got to suck it up. And, and you gotta keep, keep going because the easiest thing in the world to do is to blame someone else. I give up, why did they do this to me? Why did they do that? No one's gonna feel sorry for you. You got to suck it up and, and you keep going. And if you keep going, something good down the road is gonna to happen to you. Um, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, this is the greatest thing, thing that has ever happened to me. My wife told me when I, when I got up here, she said, she said, Robert Earl, son, don't you cry. Don't you shed no tear. <laughs> Well, last night, ladies and gentlemen, I got on my knees and I prayed to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I asked him to give me strength, to give me courage to go on. And, and, and the Lord told me, he said, said uh, Robert Earl, son, uh, if you're going to shed a tear, as long as it's a tear of happiness, it's okay to cry. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm crying tonight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.